from analog. Digital. We are everywhere you want to be. This is the CQ Blind Hams Podcast. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the CQ Blind Hams Tech Zoom. Uh, this meeting occurs once a month. And it is to have more of a in-depth discussions and such about uh, certain topics. Uh, it's kind of, if you want to think about it, a net, but it doesn't take place on the air. It takes place here in, in this, uh, uh, I guess, less than formal uh, kind of environment. So we don't have to worry about call signs or any of that kind of stuff. But we're all the same people and we're all after the same thing. It's it's all blind amateurs helping each other to get the most out of this hobby. So. Uh, Today, I am uh, joined by uh, several co-hosts here. I'm going to send it off to uh, Robert. Uh, uh, boy, let's see what I mean about call signs. So we'll just send it to Robert. <laughs> I don't know, NC5R. There we go. I knew I'd remember it at some point. Uh, go ahead, Robert. Good evening, everybody. I am uh, portable tonight. I'm coming to you from not my home state of Texas, but from North Carolina, where we are visiting family and uh, glad this portable stuff that I brought along hopefully is working now and will continue throughout the meeting. So welcome everyone. Look forward to talking about some of these apps. Back to you, Julian. Awesome. Okay. And then uh, we'll send it over to Joel, W0CAS uh, for a few words. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, this is Joel, W0CAS, Simpsonville, South Carolina. I want to thank everybody for coming in for our second, the first meeting. The first meeting we had is called the Open Shack. That was just to get to know everybody as uh, one of our techs. So back to you. Awesome. Yeah, this is good stuff. Uh, and let's see, Steve, WB2KTV, uh, killing that virus. Uh, and I, from what I understand, had a firsthand uh, battle with a virus just recently. Yes, sir. Uh, got a little touch of something nasty. First, my wife got it, then I did. I'm a longtime ham with a little bit of gap in between. When I got lazy and forgot to fill out a 610 form, and then time just went on and on. And when I became retired in 2006, that was one of the first things I did was get my AM ticket back. And I'm so very glad that I have. And it's been uh, great finding the Blind Hands group in 2018. It, was, uh, it started out on DMR, and we've all pretty much, all of us, have moved to All-Star, except the, uh, the diehard DMR people. Uh, DMR works well with some people and not so well with others. I'm one of the ones that doesn't work very well with, so I stick to All-Star. Uh, being, being that I'm located in Midtown Manhattan, in New York City, uh, HF is really not on my horizon. I live in a big 500 apartment block, so I don't really have any room for antennas, but I'm enjoying the heck out of being a ham again. Back to you, Julian. Awesome. Yeah, I know. These... Uh... These uh, digital modes and these uh, internet-powered uh, modes uh, have really been a lifesaver, especially uh, in the last couple of years when we've all had to kind of curtail our outdoor activities and such. So it's a wonderful thing. I mean, especially for me, I, I'm thankful that uh, I discovered these modes because it really is fun. Uh, and let's see, the uh, the guy running a lot of the controls here in the background, uh, Angelo, N2DYN. Want to say a couple of words? Well, just uh, good evening, folks. Thanks. Good service. Anyway, go ahead, Julian. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks a lot. And uh, last but not least, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Julian. Uh, call sign is N1CA, November 1. Charlie Alpha reside currently in the Los Angeles, California area. Although someday I hope to uh, get out of this area and go down to Foreland in Florida, where I enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> But uh, as I was saying before, the, these uh, digital modes, these apps, these all these kinds of things are just a wonderful addition to the hobby, and it's great to be able to uh, share them with each other and um, you know get the most we can out of this hobby. So uh, tonight's topic, uh, we're going to talk about accessible apps that uh, we can use on. Uh, primarily, we're focusing on the the mobile platforms, so iOS and Android. Uh, there's stuff on the computer, too, that people can uh, do. Uh, in fact, that some of them go back to there. But uh, primarily tonight, we're focusing on the on the, on the the portable or the mobile uh, uh, platforms because uh, that's really the 
the most personal computer that we all own these days is a little mobile device that's always uh, by our side. And we interact with so much, so much. So um, we're going to uh, start with the, uh, with the iOS uh, platform since it's a very popular one. And uh, I'm gonna go through a list of apps that we've talked about here and just say a little bit of something about each one. And uh, perhaps, you know, I'll see if any of uh, the co-hosts here want to chime in uh, on these as well as we go down the list. So the first one that, that's at the top of my list, of course, is the ClearNode app. Since so many of us are using the ClearNode as our all-star gateway, uh, it, uh, it definitely warrants uh, that place on the list. Because one of the nice things about the ClearNode is that it comes with this wonderfully accessible and powerful app. And I'm very thankful that uh, Jerry Philby, the uh, developer of, of these devices and this app, always make sure that this uh, product is accessible to those of us who uh, have to do it without sight. So it's a wonderful app. It basically lets you uh, set up as well as control a lot of things about your all-star node. Uh, anything from the, uh, you can change the frequency that it's on, whether it's uh, decoding or sending PL or, or, or digital coded squelch or what have you. You can use it to make connections to other nodes, to disconnect from other nodes. Um, and now of course, uh, they've also added the ability to connect to the digital modes via a, a digital, uh, a, a, an analog to a digital bridge that's built into the thing. So all of this can be done using the ClearNote app. It also manages the Wi-Fi connections that you have stored in there, as well as one of my favorite features, because it has really saved me a couple of times or more, is the Wi-Fi by light strobe method. And this is a, a way that, let's say you uh, take your clear note and, and visit a relative or somewhere that you haven't been to before. And maybe you ahead of time uh, put in the uh, credentials to their Wi-Fi, or maybe you didn't know it at the time and you get there and you wanna be able to, to get on the internet so you can get your node on and, and talk to people. Well, uh, you can actually, uh, in a section of the app that deals with this, you can actually enter the Wi-Fi credentials for the uh, router that you want to connect to, the SSID as well as the passcode. And then you hold the phone above your clear node about uh, four inches or so, give or take, and aim it toward the top of the node, which is where your antenna is. And that's kind of more or less where you want to aim is right near where the antenna port is. And when the, with the node powered on, you uh, hit the button to send the information to the node via uh, light. And it looks like it blinks a bunch of times. I'm gonna guess it's using CW or some kind of coded method to send this info to the node. And when you get it right, uh, all of a sudden uh, the node will uh, restart itself and voila, you are on the air uh, connected to Wi-Fi, and now you can get on All-Star and talk to people. So it's a lot of really neat things about this app. So it's a, uh, it's one of the ones I uh, really enjoy. Uh, I'm wondering if any of my co-hosts here have anything they want to add to the discussion of the ClearNote app. Well, this is Robert. I will just add that I am traveling right now with a Clear Zero, which is one of the ClearNode family of products. And I wish I had talked to you about the uh, strobe uh, that you just described. I knew it was there, but I have not used it. It sounds like a uh, if you find it to be quite usable. Um, the way you just described it. And that's really great. I had uh, entered my iPhone as a hotspot into my Clear Zero. And so uh, it, I had access to to set up uh, the Wi-Fi here where I'm staying at the moment uh, because I was able to access the, the app. The app was able to access the node through my phone hotspot. So that's the way that, that I did it. Um, and, and when you do it that way, you can you can go in and, and have uh, the app look for uh, possible Wi-Fi um, availability, and you can just uh, access w what it uh, shows you if that's the one you, you're looking for. And it showed me several, and I was able to choose my brother-in-law's uh, SSID and enter the password and, and get on that way. So there, there are... Uh, lots of different ways to do this. And, and I just uh, traveling across the country by car, use the uh, Clear Zero um, uh, mobile in the car, had it connected to a battery. And uh, so that's another way 
that you can use uh, these nodes. And I've, I've discovered a lot of flexibility that I didn't even think about before uh, taking this trip. Back to you, Julian. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Um, one thing I should mention, uh, a little pro tip here for those who are using their iPhone as a hotspot. When you're doing this for the first time, in other words, you're, you've got it set up in the node to look for that. When you're on your iPhone and you go to turn on the personal hotspot, you want to make sure you do not navigate away from that screen until your clear node has actually connected to your hotspot and gotten out on the internet. And at that point, then you can go ahead and, and move away from the screen. Uh, I picked up that little note from a uh, clear node net that takes place on Monday nights out here in California on, um, at the, what is it called, the Sierra Valley Amateur Radio Club or something like that. I don't remember the name. They're, they're the ones who host the coffee break net. A lot of uh, people uh, know about their uh, node. And they have a net on uh, on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 10 p.m. Eastern. And I, I picked up that tip from there. Uh, so make sure you uh, do that according when you're using your iPhone as a hotspot. I will say as far as the strobe by light, I mean, it. it I, I never have gotten it right the first time. It takes me at least two or three tries before I finally get it right. But uh, but it has worked and it has certainly saved me. And in the case of the clear zero, that is really your only other option unless you're able to get to the internet some other way. Uh, the original clear node uh, has of course an ethernet port. So that's always an option if you have one of those. But if you have a clear zero or it's not always easy to get to the Wi-Fi router that you're trying to connect to with an Ethernet cable. Uh, this strobe by light is is a wonderful thing, and it's kind of a good thing to, to become acquainted with. So uh, let's see. Anybody else, uh, any of our uh, hosts here, have anything to add to the uh, ClearNote? That's, I think that's about it. For, it's a very good app. We, all of us ClearNote owners really love it. It's a very handy app. Awesome. Yes, it sure is. It really so next, makes switching, you know, from, from node to node very nice and very convenient if you don't want to uh, use your radio and use touch tones to 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 change it to a different node. You can do it right in the app, and you can make sure that you're uh, disconnected from the node that you were connected to before you go to another one. And it keeps a history of all the nodes that you've connected to in the app, so they're all right there in a list, and it makes it easy to to jump around all over All Star. Yes, it it certainly does. And I, I definitely you, thank you for mentioning that other feature. You can enable a mode where it automatically disconnects you from the node that you're on when you go and try to make another connection via the app. It's important to note that this only works if you're using the app. So if you check that checkbox and then you go and use touch tones to connect to another node, then you're going to wind up with unintended bridging. So as long as you're using the app consistently for all of it, uh, that checkbox is a really handy thing. It also lets you name uh, the connection. So maybe you don't remember the numbers, but if it's something that you use regularly, you can actually name it uh, from that screen as well so that it makes it easier for you to know what it is when you're looking at it to connect to. So next on my list, and it's an app that I'm sure I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on, is Echolink. Uh, we all know Echolink. It's, of course, got its starts on the computer, but uh, now it's used a lot on the mobile platforms and it allows you to connect to the echo link network uh you know you can log into it uh do all that stuff find other nodes to connect to uh and it works really nice and the one pro tip i'm going to give with the echo link app for those who don't know is that instead of looking for the button to start and stop your transmissions you can actually use your two finger double tap magic tap feature uh, on ios to start and stop your transmissions. so uh, that helps a lot. Uh, I notice a lot of times when I hear Echo Link users come onto a bridge and they don't know that you always hear, you can always tell because you, you hear them swiping around the screen and looking for that button. <laughs> so uh, you can save yourself a lot of headache by uh, remembering that, that the two finger double tap, which is known for starting and stopping things, works very well in the Echo Link app. Uh, anything to add to that uh, Echo Link discussion? Oh, last, if you, anybody missed last month's uh, Tech Zoom, we uh, did sort of an introduction to Echo Lane, DMR, and All Star. So if you need to find a little bit more information out, you can go back to that last month's podcast. And of course, you can go to blindhams.com and there's all kinds of information there as well. I have another uh, comment about the phone version of Echo Link. 
Yeah, and go ahead, Steve. That, that's simply that on the computer, you need to have ports forwarded on your router, but on the phone, you don't because the phone doesn't use the same kind of connectivity that uh, the computer does. The computer connects directly. The phone connects through what's called the proxy server. So uh, the proxy server takes care of all that port forwarding for you. Oh, very nice. And tying it briefly back to ClearNote app for a second, you can actually set your ClearNote to handle uh, uh, Echolink connections as well. So b besides the, uh, the digital bridge stuff, you can also use it as an Echolink node as well. All right. Um, I think uh, we've covered Echolink. I think it's probably the mode that most people are, are the most familiar with. So uh, we'll move on to another app that has uh, become very handy to me, and that's called Call Search. And just like its name would suggest, this is an accessible app that lets you search for call signs. I believe it's in uh, accessing uh, the QRZ database, and uh, it's a much uh, easier <laughs> and less hassle experience to to look up call signs versus trying to do it on, on QRZ.com. Exactly. And what's neat, and, and one of the things I like about call search is it also keeps a history of, of call signs that you've looked up. So, you know, if, if you want to go back later and, and read something else about uh, that call sign or you forgot some information, uh, you can do that. And of course, you can get people's email addresses right from there and send them email right from your phone. So uh, I really like this app. Uh, it's very simple, straightforward, to the point, does what it needs to do and does it very well. Any additions to the uh, call search? No, so far I wanted to make sure everybody realized that all these apps we mentioned so far are all free. Uh, we may, I don't know if we have any paid apps or not, maybe we do, but th these are all free apps that you can get in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They, they are free. Um, I mean, in the case of the ClearNote, obviously you need to buy a ClearNote to, to, to get the most out of it. <laughs> you won't get too far without that. But yeah, the, the app is free and uh, so are uh, all these other ones. So another one here to add to the uh, collection is Repeater Book. Um, and that could be very helpful when you're in an area that uh, you're not familiar or that you're going to visit. And you can look up all kinds of local repeaters in the area. I will say, you know, you always have to take these databases with a bit of a grain of salt. Sometimes uh, that it may say there's a repeater there and you go and put all these stuff in your radio and you go to key up and there's nothing there. Uh, Southern California is notorious for having a lot of what they call paper repeaters, which means that they exist on paper somewhere, <laughs> but there's no actual equipment uh, on a hilltop somewhere or anywhere for that matter that uh, uh, uses the frequencies. It just got the pairs coordinated. I guess they use it for, uh, I don't know what, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is a wonderful little app uh, repeater book. It's just like the, uh, the old print version. Um, anybody want to add to that? No, I think uh, I, I can't think of anything. That's that's you know, it's a great app. Uh, I use it on the computer a lot more than I do on the phone, but I, I also have it. Just, just it's a great thing, like you said. If you go out of town for a frequency, you got you got a way to start. Yeah, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with this at all because I know this is not tonight's topic. But I will say, you know, my experience with being with traveling right now is it's wonderful to have a repeater book in combination with one of these fully. Uh, accessible uh, GD77 type radios, which you can program very well, any of them now from the keypad. So it's very easy to enter a repeater and get all the information in there and have it to totally be accessible when you do it. That's very nice. It sure is wonderful to have that. That is absolutely true. So let's see. And uh, uh, Speaking of, of fun things to do while you're traveling, Scanner Radio is another app. And I think they have several different flavors of it, but I think they do have a, a free... Uh, version with ads, of course, on it. So it means that, yeah, you got to interact with those things on your screen every now and then. But I think they have pro versions and such where uh, I know I bought one flavor of it at one point where it was like uh, it got rid of the ads. But I think nowadays they're really pushing like everybody else toward a subscription model, if I'm not mistaken. But it's kind of fun with that app because uh, you can monitor scanner feeds all over the place. And it's not just public safety stuff. You can also, uh, I think there are ham repeaters that show up on there as well. Because at the end of the day, these are all people that plug their the radio into the internet and connect with that app. And when you're on that app, you could actually find their radio 
and it's like you're right there tuning into their radio. So it comes in handy or when you're traveling. Also, when you hear of an incident somewhere that's in the news, uh, you know, a big incident, it's kind of fun to look up that city and uh, start t- tapping into their scanner feeds. Any uh, additions with that one? No, I've used I've got the free version on my on my iPhone. It uh, it works very well. It's uh, I uh, even got the police department in a small town in Crossville, Tennessee, where I used the sheriff's office. It's a good app for for the money. Yeah, it sure is. And again, you know, it, it all depends on the, what's at the other end. So sometimes it, I I don't believe that these people get paid for this. I could be wrong, but um, so it's in a sense volunteers. So you know, sometimes maybe somebody uh, pulls the radio off or. Uh, you know, something happens and this feed that was there before may not be there now. So your mileage may vary, but it is it is a fun app to play with. One of those volunteers that provides those feeds is our very own W2AIB. Oh, awesome. So he provides the stuff up in the uh, Albany area. I think he's got three radios plugged in. Oh, neat. <laughs> Do they, do they pay him for that, do you know, or, or is it just... Uh... I don't know, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I figure probably the most that they maybe give you is an ad-free version of the app or something like that. Maybe a pat on if the head, and a, heart, a pat on the head, and a hearty thank you. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, now I'm going to talk about a, a an app that uh, I debated whether I should put it here because uh, number one, it um, it isn't out of the box the most accessible app, but it can be made accessible. But I'm going to mention it anyway, just because uh, I, th- I think it has its place. And it's an app called Node Remote. And this app allows you to uh, have access and to uh, control an all-star node. Now, this is primarily of interest to people who have a node besides a clear node, because as we already know, clear node makes a wonderful, powerful, accessible app that does everything we need to do. So chances are, if you have a clear node, you're not going to be too interested in this app. But for those uh, of us who have other kinds of nodes, like Shari nodes or hotspot radios or, or uh, uh, micro nodes and, and such, uh, this app uh, is helpful. It doesn't do everything that the Clear Node app does, but it gives you access to, to a lot of basic things, like you know being able to make connections, end connections. Uh, I think you can even run macros on it. I've, I've seen that area. Um, I was able to put in a, uh, have it do the, uh, Oh, what is it? There's, there's one of the commands that I would do via touch tones that uh, I was able to put in here. And now it just does it when I when I run the macro. So it's a, it's a pretty neat app, but uh, it isn't uh, the best labeled. Um, there's a lot of button labeling that you need to do. However, it can be done if you have an iOS device. Uh, Patrick did a wonderful podcast on CQ Blind Hams. So if you go and search uh, through those archives, you'll find his uh, podcast. And if you follow all the instructions he gives you, uh, this app can be made to be very accessible and um, it gives you a way to control uh, a node that's other than a clear node. Any of you guys uh, have anything to add to this? No, other than, uh, yeah, if you if you have a note other than a clear note and uh, you have an iPhone, uh, go go get Patrick's podcast and listen to it. We have it on YouTube and on the Anchor podcast. Yeah, um, it, it's definitely a must, but it but it's it's very straightforward. Patrick does a really good job simplifying this. And uh, if you're, if you haven't, if you didn't know about this way, this uh, feature in iOS, then you'll come away with a with a bonus because there is a way to label unlabeled elements in iOS with VoiceOver, and it's very easy to use. Patrick pretty much uh, shows us how this works, and once you do that, you can label apps like these and uh, take care. I mean, you know, unfortunately, it should be the developer that does it, but not all developers are good about doing their due diligence. So it's neat that Apple gives us the ability to do this for ourselves. The other thing I want to mention is that clear, uh, uh, Node Remote is not free. I think it was, was it three or four bucks, something like that. It, it, it wasn't a whole lot of money, but uh, it is a one-time charge. There's no subscription or anything like that. So it is there for those who have non-clear nodes and want to be able to uh, use it. One of the areas where it comes in really handy is when you want to disconnect, especially if you're on a busy talk group like Blind Hams can be at times. It's nice to just be able to uh, go to the app and disconnect from it as opposed to having to wait for a break in the action to do our star seven, six. So I, I think it's a good app to have another app. That's uh, 
becoming very popular too is, is Zoiper. And what this app does is it lets you, uh, it's, uh, it's somewhat, you can kind of think of it almost like the DV switch mobile of iOS because it lets you connect to uh, your all-star node. And this app is primarily meant to be like a VOIP, a voice over IP phone connection type app, but it can be configured to work with all-star nodes um, and clear nodes as well. And um, lets you have access to it. When you, when you configure it all right, you can uh, be outside of your home and uh, be able to remotely talk through your all-star node. Uh, also, uh, they, they do have a free version. I think they have a premium version. I'm not 100% sure what all you get with the premium version. I bought it just because I, I like supporting developers who, who are doing this stuff. So it's a good app. It does require some amount of button labeling as well. I think I had to label the uh, the, uh, the the number keys for entering uh, numeric information. But again, uh, using the iOS uh, voiceover method of labeling unlabeled buttons, it, it was not that hard to do at all. And it's something you do one time and you basically set it and forget it. So um, you guys want to add anything to this one? No, I've, I've not used it. I've got it, but I've not tried to use the button, you know? I need to learn to do that. I need to go back over and do what Patrick taught us about labeling buttons. I worked on it at all. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a handy little feature, and it's existed for quite a while on VoiceOver. And, um, you know, it, it helps it helps to overcome these little hurdles. So um, that's all I've got on my list of um, accessible uh, iOS ham apps. Joel or any of you guys, you, you, are there any apps that you've played with that uh, – didn't get on this list? Uh, that's about it uh, that I can think of. I'm sure there's a thousand more that we haven't mentioned you know, due to time restraints. We thought just uh, this short list would be a, a great place to start. And we get into the question and answer session. Maybe you guys uh, that are that just came in with us, maybe you guys will have something in that. We're done with the iPhones, I think. All right. Absolutely. And yeah, I was, was going to say that as well during the Q&A section. Uh, if any of you have any apps that you've used on either platform uh, that you find to be accessible and, and helpful, uh, that would be a good time to share it with the rest of us. So moving on to Android. Well, uh, some oh, of the stuff... Uh, really... Okay. Well, it's. Um, I think it'd be easier if we could hold off on the questions till the end. Um, it, during that, that section, I think it, it that might... Uh... Good, it's out of oh, okay. Yeah. So... so... Yeah, it, it, it just e makes it easier because then we can kind of stay on track and, you know, get through the uh, list in our agenda here. And then whatever time's left over, we can certainly uh, take Q&A. So uh, on Android, um, uh, the, a lot of the apps that I have are, are, are similar to what we have on, on iOS. So it maybe won't take as long to go through the Android list. I just want to point out, though, for those who are listening and maybe think that Android is not accessible, uh, there's a lot of myths out there that say that Android's not an accessible platform, and it actually is. It is very accessible. It just it's certain things work differently than they do on iOS. Uh, there's definitely a learning curve to go with it, but um, and there's a lot of variety and things that uh, take place in Android. But that's part of the power of Android is that it gives us a lot more choice and variety. But I just want to put it out here that Android is very much an accessible platform. It's just as accessible as iOS. It's just that things work a little differently and you have to learn a different workflow. But it's uh, I like having both devices myself because uh, uh, it just uh, that there are apps you can find on some platforms that you don't have on others. And we'll see that momentarily. So um, the ClearNote app exists on uh, on Android as well, and it is just as accessible in Android as it is on iOS. But again, there are things that work a little differently. You know, on iOS, they, there's a lot of this custom or actions menu kind of stuff where you swipe up or down to, to get to options and you double tap. Where on Android, I think you have to do it differently. You have to like double tap and hold to get certain things to pop up, options that then pop up that let you do some of the same things. But again, uh, it is just as accessible on, on either platform. Echo Link, same thing. Uh, I, I find the experience to be uh, just as accessible. It's just, of course, the layouts of some screens. Things may not look exactly the same, but it is very accessible. DV Switch Mobile. Now, there is an app that you only find on Android, and it's a great app because it kind of like what, what I was talking about with Zoiper earlier. Uh, it lets you have remote access to your all-star node at home. 
And that comes in really handy sometimes when you're out and about and you want to get on All-Star real quick and uh, you don't have access to a repeater that has an All-Star portal. So uh, what this lets you do is uh, it lets you configure to connect to uh, your nodes, uh, both internally in your network as well as externally when you're out of the home. Uh, it lets you, uh, you know, connect and disconnect and things like that. So. It's a, it's a very helpful little app. Oh, and another cool thing is that because again, it's Android and you have more control over certain things, you can configure it to where there's not an on-screen PTT button if you don't want to use one. You can actually configure it to where your up volume button becomes your PTT. So it, it feels a little bit more like you're talking on a radio when you're using this app. And I think that's probably my most favorite feature of, of all with that app is that I can talk into it and feel it, it resembles a little more like the experience of when I'm talking on an HT. Uh, you know, you guys have anything to add to the uh, uh, DV Switch Mobile? Yeah, I just wanted to add this, Robert, that uh, I was able to successfully configure this app uh, to use it on a Braille Sense 6. And it's very nice to have the Braille interface with this app because you can see, uh, you can see connections, you can see uh, the various uh, buttons that you have available to you. Uh, without needing to also use speech while you're uh, using the app. Uh, and it, it, thanks to Julian, I was able to figure out how to configure it. it there's a bit of, a bit of, you need to know a few things about what to put in the various fields when you set it up, but it's not hard. It just, you just, you just need some information and you don't find, I didn't find really great documentation for at least for our purpose, but it does work well with the Braille Sense 6. Pretty cool. Back to you, Julian. Oh, wow. That is cool. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing with, again, with Android is that it, it exists on all kinds of hardware, including these note takers. So, um, yeah, you can turn your note taker into a, into a radio terminal. <laughs> so that is really cool. And yeah, it, it, it does, you know, it's, it's somewhat reminiscent of setting up IAXRPT on a Windows PC. You just have to know what numbers to put into what boxes and it is not very intuitive. So, uh, some of the stuff I figured out by reading others, I figured out by asking and, uh, the rest of it, I figured out by trial and error. <laughs> so that's kind of the fun of it is, is figuring out how all this works, but it is, it is a neat app. And I think that's also one of those apps where there, it, it is available free. I think it'll let you store. Uh, I think there's a limitation on the amount of, of, of nodes that you can store in the free version versus if you buy the paid version, which I think is, again, only a few bucks. It's not a lot of money. Uh, now you can store a, a bunch of different uh, nodes that you can remotely access. Um, yeah, that's right. You can. I, I myself haven't played too much with that side of things, but that's true. You, you can, uh, I think you can do DMR and some of the other modes. Um all right, and let's see what else we have here. Node Remote. Well, it uh, just like on the uh, iOS side. Now, I will say that I I personally have not uh, used Node Remote on Android, but I've known several people who have and report to me that uh, it. Uh, in fact, I'm told that it's more accessible out of the box on Android than it is on iOS. Is that have you guys heard that? Yeah, there's well, actually, the button bring up your. Yep, it's cool that the screen readers give us that uh, function because, yeah, like I said, developers don't always do their due diligence and shame on them, but thankfully we have tools. Another app that I uh, have on this list, but I have to say I don't have a, uh, any experience with, but uh, hopefully my co-host will jump in here and <laughs> fill in these gaps, one called Hamsphere. Joel, I think you're the one who mentioned that one to me. No, no, that wasn't me. That must have been Angelo. I don't, I, I don't even know what it does. It's you, Angelo? Hamsphere is transmit. I think that's a subscription basis, but it's not a, unlike, um, it's worth taking a look. If you have an Android. You know what? That sounds interesting. I think I'm going to go get that app and play with it. Cause that's fun having access to an SDR. Uh, another app is called QRZ assistant. This would be probably the equivalent of the call search app that I mentioned in the uh, previous list. So uh, have any of you, have you guys played with that one? That's yeah, it's basically the same app. Oh, they just call it a different name. So yeah, it's it's just a way to look up uh, call signs. When you hear a call sign, you want to know who they are or find out how to contact them. It's uh, I like these more simplified uh, interfaces because QRZ can really be a pain sometimes <laughs> when you're trying to get in there and get some information real quick. You got to do a lot of tabbing around, moving around. 
because half of it's ad. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, screen readers don't have ad blockers. They ought to do that. But uh, something tells me the industry would go kicking and screaming. So another uh, very popular app, it's not a mode that I've personally played with, but uh, certainly on Blind Hamps, we've talked to people over the years on it. The Peanut, uh, the digital mode Peanut, uh, they have an app on Android. So I imagine it's going to work uh, very similar to maybe uh, the way Echo Link works. It does DMR. Oh, okay. So it does I DMR think it's as well. Digital like DMR. Yeah, it does. It has that I same kind so. of sound to it, which I always thought was kind of strange, being that it's a VoIP type of app. Why would they? It does DMR, but it, it also does. Mm. I mean, mm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can connect to DStar. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Scanner radio. So uh, same kind of thing as, as mentioned on iOS. Let's you uh, have access to scanner feeds and all kinds of radio feeds uh, in many places. So I think that's about it as far as uh, the, the list of apps. Do you guys have anything else that uh, didn't make this list? You and Robert and Angela are the ones that has, uh, has Android right now. I'm looking. For, I don't have uh, okay. any Android stuff right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got a Pixel or a, uh, a new Samsung uh, <laughs> A53 5G. It's a neat little mid-range phone that uh, my YL just got, and she's really liking it. It's a very powerful phone. So uh, we're done with that part of the discussion. I guess before we uh, go into Q&A, might as well just uh, get this out of the way. Um, every uh, time we do one of these, uh, one of the uh, benefits of coming and attending these in person as opposed to listening after the fact is that you can have some say in the uh, future topics uh, for discussion. So for our next meeting, uh, we've all talked this over and uh, come up with three topics. And I guess, you know, we'll we'll take votes on, uh, on each one and whichever one gets the most votes, I guess uh, that's what we will uh, aim to uh, provide uh, during the May Tech Zoom. The first uh, one is uh, if we can get a Q&A set up with either um, Joe, Joseph Steven, or Ian Spencer, the people who bring us the uh, accessible and open uh, software that have transformed our radios into something that's perfectly usable by blind people. Uh, uh, you know, that well, would, I got, you know, I got, a, I got a, a problem with Ian. Uh, I've talked with Gina that he's not going to be able to do a Zoom during the night. So what we're going to do is next Thursday, I want to, we're going to talk to you about that, Julian. Record a, uh, record a roundtable with. Uh, with uh, Ian and Gina, and if we get Bob Tini on Friday at 11. Friday at 11. <laughs> there we go again, because I got doctor's ones all day. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Friday, all right, Friday so we'll, uh, so forget the Ian part. Um, I think Joseph Stephen, it, it it works good with his, uh, his where company. he is in the world and where we are in the world, if we can, I, we've, I think we've had discussions with him before. So I'm thinking a, a Q&A with Joseph Stephen on accessible GD77. So that's one uh, topic uh, that we could possibly consider. Setting up DV switch mobile on Android. Robert talked about this and, and it's true. It can be a little dicey and complicated. So how about having a discussion uh, where we can kind of deep dive into that a little bit or uh, accessible analog radios. You know, we hear a lot about the GD77 family radios and now the TYT 9600, but what about accessible analog radios? And by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean that they talk. I mean, talking is nice, but uh, what about uh, if it gives you enough beeps or uh, predictability in its uh, operations that a blind person could uh, learn to use it? So uh, we can have a discussion on that. So those are our three topics. So Joel, what do you think? Should we, should we go ahead and take this vote now or should we do a little sure. Q&A and then have everybody vote later? Yeah, I think we take the vote now in case anybody else, you know, leaves before we get it taken. They won't feel left out. Okay. And since you guys are able to uh, look at the raised hand stuff, uh, should we do it that way? Have everybody raise their hand on each one when we put it out? or? Yeah, uh, if you can tell everybody if, uh, on their phone how to raise hand or on the yeah, app. If you, okay. you, know, you know all those, you and Angelo know all those functions. All right. So here's how it goes. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Zoom, if you're using it on a mobile platform, uh, the the uh, thing you want is, let me look at my Zoom here so I can tell you exactly. There is a, uh, what am I, see, there you go. I had to hit the got it button. Okay, there's a more button. And in there, I believe, is the option to, uh, to raise hands. So um, if you're using the phone interface, 
the way that you raise hands is star nine. So when you hear something that you want to vote for, if you're calling in on the phone, uh, you would hit the star and the nine to raise your hand at the appropriate time. Um, on the computer, how do you, do you guys know how to do that on the computer? I don't remember offhand. Robert, you have any idea? We might just have to open it if we'll say. I think it's Alt Y on Windows and Option Y on the Mac, but uh, I can not know about the Windows one, but I think that's right. Okay, well, let, let's do this. Let, let's let try, um, let's open it Wait. up to raised hands. Oh, go ahead, Steve. I was just gonna say raised hands is Alt Y. Alt Y, okay. okay. So there you go. So, so, okay, well, we haven't done anything, Flip, so. <laughs> Uh, but I guess flip uh, votes for having this vote to happen. So <laughs> you hit all go ahead and... go, it goes away. Is that the way it works? Yeah, it's a toggle. Yeah, so go ahead. And, uh, let's lower all the hands now. Okay, so the first choice is so. All done. The I first choice that. is the the Q the the uh, and, and anybody who's not talking at this time, if you could mute yourself, that'd be great. Um, so the first uh, topic uh, for for consideration is. The Q and A with Joseph Stevens. So, anybody who would like to see that for the May Tech Zoom, go ahead and raise your hands now. I'll try. Okay, and I got to remember if you're on. Okay, so somebody I'll withdrew their vote. Participants. Oh, okay. Okay, he Mark does want it. Okay, so do you guys make note of uh, how many? We got five participants. Okay, is there anybody who has not been able to raise their hand uh, and is on this call and wants to be, uh, be counted in voting for this? Speak up now. Mute button. Participants. Okay. Angelo Sanesso. Left. Flip dash K4 on. Left. Flip left. Okay. So we got those. And um, okay. So what do we have? Five on that? Yes. Okay. So we got five uh, on the Q&A with Joseph Steven. Okay. The next topic is setting up DV switch on Android. Anybody who would like to vote for that is our next topic for May's meeting. Go ahead and raise your hands now. Alt Y on the computer. Star nine on the phone. <laughs> Flip, you voted for both. Okay, so we, 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 you can only vote for one. <laughs> Alt Y. It never fails. If, if you fail to say something, somebody's going to do it. <laughs> so, okay. Um, and is there, is there anybody on the call who can't get the hand raising thing that wants to vote for this topic? We only got two for that one. Okay. Okay, so we got two for that one. All right, um, then we'll go to the next one. Um, so let's lower all the hands. And uh, the next topic is accessible analog radios. We wanna have a discussion about accessible analog radios for May's TechZoom meeting. If you're interested in that being the topic, please raise your hands now. And again, um, okay, so I think we've got two there that I've counted. Um, and again, if, if you're on the phone, star nine to raise your hand. Uh, if you're on I got the- uh, so far. Oh, we got four on that. Okay. Oh, ooh, boy, that's close. Is there anybody who uh, can't get the hand raise thing working who wants to vote for this topic? Accessible analog radios. Speak up now. Looks like we might have a joke next month if everything goes as planned. Okay. Well, and the good not, thing is we, can, we got a backup. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like because it's the uh, accessible analog radios is, is a very close second. So. If for whatever reason we can't get it working with uh, with Joseph, then uh, we know for sure what it'll be. So, <laughs> so stay tuned to the uh, announcement list. Uh, we'll find out soon enough uh, which is it going to be. So, okay. Um, now that we've uh, taken care of all that formal formal stuff, let's go ahead and open up to to Q and A here about the uh, accessible apps for Android or iOS. Anybody who wishes to speak, uh, let's try raising your hand. I think John so, had a question earlier. You yeah, that's right. He did. John. We, sh we should give it to him first. Go ahead, John. I thought he, he left and came back. I, I don't know if he did or not. John oh. Glass, are you still with? Oh, yes, I am. It took me just a second to get to the uh, unmute button. Sorry about that. There you go. Um, the question I had, and uh, I apologize because I got a phone call in the middle of the uh, iOS discussion, but did anyone mention repeater book? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that that one got mentioned. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. a very good app. Yeah. There is so. another database, and I guess we was our, the R Finder base. The R Finder, yeah, that's a pay, Android pro button base. It's database. probably more accurate. It, it's probably more uh, accurate in it than Oh, it is. But, book, yeah, but it is. I think it's $9. Although I have heard that even the, some of its listings uh, 
aren't always uh, right on. So, yeah. and of yeah. course, uh, that works great if you have the R Finder radio. Because you know that the R Finder uh, app is equally accessible as Repeater Book. Absolutely, Angelo used. Okay, and then I think I heard uh, Flip's hand was raised. Flip, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, uh, if you can hear me, uh, there. Gotcha, move gotcha. Right now. Uh, there is another piece that can go with the repeater book. I believe it was them that I saw it in, uh, what was that thing called? Blue Cat or something. If you got uh, like a mobile radio or something, not not your HT that I can tell so far, but you plug it in and uh, your Bluetooth part of your phone will connect up to your radio. And you can just tap the repeater you're looking at and boom, it goes to your radio. So that's well, another it's a thing. Device. Just, uh, it's a device. Yeah, it's a device that no, goes with that. Wow. And don't know the price. It didn't look like, uh, that expensive. I haven't looked at it since, but it, it's probably been a year or two since I did look at it. Another thing to look at, though, to consider if you're going mobile or something. Is that similar to the device that I've heard about that can be used to program uh, UV 5R as a Baofeng? Don't they have something like that? It's like a Bluetooth device. You, and then you Julian, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. well, that's new. That's a device that plugs into the uh, UV 5R. Uh, that, uh, I don't know what works with the repeater book, but you can. You, it, it does work with a Bluetooth app. Interesting. That's something to look into. I'm tired of trying to program my Bluetooth, my uh, UV 5R. Yeah, that could work. All right. Um, anybody else have any questions or apps that they have found on either platform that are helpful for ham stuff that are, you know, that didn't make our list? You want to raise a hand? I, I had a question, but I, I guess you're not seeing my hand for some reason. Go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. Shirley? Yeah, go ahead, Shirley. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I had a couple of things. First of all, I guess you guys have a list, and I just sort of incidentally got this message about this week, but I would like to be on the list for your um, phone calls, and I would I would be very interested also to hear about the podcast. You said there was some kind of podcast available and I'm, I guess I'm also curious who the person was that talked about having a um, Braille Sense 6. I'd love to be able to communicate with them because I've been trying to use Echo Link on there and haven't been real successful. So I'd like to compare some notes um, with the other person that has the Braille Sense 6. Sure, that's Robert. find out who that is and we could figure out a way to communicate. Yeah, uh, that, that person is Robert NC5R. Is this call sign November Charlie 5 Romeo? Um, Okay. And I'm sure he'd be happy to, to chat with you and, you know, uh, co collaborate with you on that. And as far as the list goes, uh, what you want to do is join the Blind Hams uh, mailing list. And you can find out how to do that by going to blindhams.com, www.blindhams.com. Okay. Yeah, I was on it one time. It just got so busy <laughs> that I... Yeah, end up you know, with it, but. one of the things I recommend doing for joining any mailing list is if you don't already have one, everybody should have a, a separate account that they use for signing up for stuff. You know, not something that you use for, for personal communications or business communications, but it's always good to have, I call it a miscellaneous account. So anytime there's a promotion somewhere and I want to get a, a promotion or a coupon or what have you, um, or join a mailing list. <laughs> uh, I use that account. I think account. I'm actually on it. I'm in some kind of a no mail type thing. I've been on it for years. But oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, there's settings um, you can set. Did you it. say there was a podcast also? Yes. Yeah. Did you say somebody a, have, put a podcast out? Oh, we we do. This is a podcast group. Uh, the guys that are, are the hosts tonight, we're, we host the CQ Blind Hams podcast. And you can okay, get it is that the name there. of it if I go to look for it? Is it yes. just called CQ Blind Hams? CQ Blind Hams. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, okay. Spotify. Uh, also, we have a YouTube channel by the same name. And all the podcasts are the same as the... It's not a video, it's an audio this will also be a podcast in a couple of days will also up on our podcast okay. feed. And in addition, I mean, any, any podcast app will, will pick this up as well as your smart sure. speakers. You could, you could ask your lady a to play CQ blind hams podcast. Okay. okay or thank Google you. Home. Um, yeah. Google home, your Victor stream, uh, you know, as long as it's the second gen, at least the one that gets on the internet or later. I know John is on here. John, have you 
tried to use Echo Link on the six yet? Okay, maybe I, I'm on. sorry, Shirley. Have I tried to use Echo Link on what? On the Braille Sense six. No, I have not used it on the Braille Sense six. I'm using it on my iPhone, but I have not tried it on the Braille Sense yet. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you, you guys' time. And this gentleman's call again is N, N, NC5R. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. I'm uh, Robert NC5R. You can email me if you want it. NC5R at iCloud.com. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very awesome. much for your time, all of you. You're welcome. And thank you for taking the time to participate here with us. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, questions uh, or and it looks like Mark has his hand raised. So go ahead, Mark. You're making it, Mark. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, do they do they have any um, apps that anybody knows of where you can go to get solar weather, like you do National Weather Service and stuff like that? Is there any apps that will give you that information via your phone? Yes, I think Ben Davison. You know the 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 podcast I, or the YouTube channel that I sent you. He had they have an app. Uh, I think it's called Space Weather Alert or something. I'll find out, Mark, and I'll get you a link to it tomorrow. I'll let you know about it tomorrow. But over at the Suspicious Observers, he's the one that has an app. It's a uh, it talks about the sun and earthquakes. It's not just the sun, but it does the sun and earthquake. It's oh, oh. Uh, earthquake. Notif notifier and let you know prediction app <laughs> it's earthquake oh interesting yeah, yeah yeah that's that's good uh, because, <coughs> excuse me because i was I'm really kind of interested in that like i am earth weather because there's a lot of um and i i didn't mention it here but there are a lot of good weather apps too you know, for phone users if you're yeah, they are they are yep. but, oh yeah absolutely yeah i mean you know we had to kind of Try to keep it to uh, <laughs> to a certain point, uh, right. but yeah, weather, weather apps are fun. I, I could spend yep. hours on those too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, oh, Joel, was it you or who was it that was telling me about an app that you can get uh, grid square information? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not naming it. It's not a not a good name. It's a it's a grid square. Yeah, it'll tell you exactly where your grid square is that you're located, but. I don't know who came up with the name, but they probably need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and mi you don't want to say it in mixed company. Not a nice name for an app. I don't know how they got it by Apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. Interesting. Controversy. Anybody wants to know about this grid square notification, email me and I'll send you a link to it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> email, of, course email now, like of course, now you've got my curiosity. Yeah? That's like one of the, uh, <laughs> wet, it, it's a, there's a weather program out there called what the forecast and everybody knows it as wtf <laughs> what the forecast there yeah. you go mark there's your weather app <laughs> i gotta there go look go. that one up <laughs> perfect i think uh i think flip has his hand up oh maybe not i did oh there you go yeah um i know on android ham gps also gives you your good square oh there we, yeah, that's a nice oh there you piece. go and <laughs> that that one i <laughs> believe will work uh you can it has something to do with, with your camera as well. I've never figured it out because, hey, I can't see. Who cares? <laughs> I, you know, I don't I think need book, I think Repeater Book does too. Yeah, you, you mentioned that, Steve. Or you or Angelo once said that Repeater Book would tell you your grid square. And that's good for contesting. Uh, people, anybody likes to contest, you usually need to know your grid square. I used to know it when I lived in Tennessee. It was Echo Mike 75 uh, LU. <laughs> I don't know what it is here in South Carolina. I've got a bring the app up okay well now you, at least you got a family friendly named app to do so <laughs> anyone else with any uh questions or suggestions uh about apps accessible ham apps john glass's uh, hand is still up did he have another question uh no i i don't i'm i'm sorry i must have forgotten to lower it i'll go do that no problem john no big deal all righty all right, so I guess uh, we will call this one a wrap. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to uh, come and participate, as well as those of you who are taking the time to listen to us after the fact. Uh, this is the CQ Blind Hams Tech Zoom. Again, we meet every month. Uh, one thing to, to mention, starting next month, we are shifting up by an hour. Uh, we are now going to have our meetings on the second Thursday of, of the month. Uh, but instead of 7 p.m. Eastern, it's now 8 p.m. Eastern. So 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, if you want to follow with us live here. 
And uh, again, if you want to find out how to learn about these meetings and get on a mailing list or just in general, uh, learn a lot of good information that's relevant to uh, amateur radio from blindness perspective, go to blindhams.com. That's www.blindhams.com and avail yourself of all the uh, information we have there. Learn about the Blind Hams Bridge and its uh, plethora of different ways of getting on. And uh, hopefully we'll get to work you on the air someday. So from all of us here at CQ Blind Hams, 7-3. Seven, 7-3, three. Seven, three, everybody. 7-3. Seven, 7-3, three. Seven, three, seven, three, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and visit www.blindhams.com.